this is our final demo for the Fruit Ninja uh, augmented reality game. Um, so I'm going to be playing the game right now. I have an infrared LED on the tip of my finger on the glove. Um, and our infrared camera, which is propped up on top of the laptop facing towards me, um, is connected to the Raspberry Pi. And the, Raspberry, the tracking system inside the Raspberry Pi um, is uh, being sent over to Unity um, so that as I move my finger, the mouse on screen will follow my finger. Um, and so I can play the game. So fruits and bombs are spawning. Um, and I can uh, slice uh, fruits and they will go away, just like that. And if I slice a bomb, it would also um, disappear, just like so. Um, and as the player uh, plays uh, more and more the, and gets more points, the score increases, uh, more and more fruits will spawn. Um, as I slash fruits and bombs, I will get different haptic feedback. And how that is handled is uh, Unity will send different feedback based on whether a fruit or a bomb was slashed. Um, and the feedback will arrive on the Bluetooth module on the glove. Um, this feedback will go from the Bluetooth module um, via the Arduino to the MUX. And the MUX will control which of these two microcontrollers to turn on. Um, and at the moment, we have this one to turn on when a fruit is being slashed, that this uh, vibrating mini disc vibrates. And this one is for bombs being slashed. Um, and uh, finally, we have a visual representation of the haptic feedback on the screen, um, which uh, represents exactly when a vibration is felt in the glove. For Fruit Ninja AR, we seek to solve a couple problems. So at first, we found that any AR or VR headset would cost anywhere from $300 to $1,000. So this is a high price point for any headset or game console combination. And if anyone wants to get involved with augmented reality games, they would have to pay this price point. And most existing solutions require consoles. So for example, the PS4 VR headset requires the PS4 gaming console. So you need to buy two things. We also noticed that there were a lack of intuitive AR environment controls. So if you want to engage in any AR games, you kind of have to grab onto these controllers, hold them, they have a lot of buttons on them. We kind of wanted to create a solution that you could just wear and interact with AR environments and even get feedback from them. And finally, we noticed that in this virtual world, we're all on Zoom meetings, there's a lack of leisure, virtual activities, things that you can do for fun. You've had a rough day, you've had done a lot of work, we wanted a fun activity that you could just play this game and enjoy with your friends. Now we'd like to take you through the block diagram of our system. Starting from the top, we have our player who is directly interacting with the glove. The glove is battery powered and is controlled by the floor Arduino board. The Arduino floor is a well-optimized board for wearable devices due to its small form factor and availability of external modules. However, one drawback of the floor is the lack of I.O. pins. In order to drive our multiple haptic feedback motors, we had to use a MUX. The MUX controls signals to the haptic motor controllers, which then drive the motor discs. Also connected to the floor is a Bluetooth module that receives signals from the rest of the system in order to tell the floor to send waveforms to the haptic motor controllers and trigger that haptic feedback. Finally, the last component of the glove is the infrared LED, which is picked up by our IR camera sensor in order to perform tracking. Moving to the next major component of our system, we have the Raspberry Pi, which communicates with the glove via the infrared sensor and Bluetooth. So it receives data from the infrared sensor to detect the position of the glove, and it sends data over the Bluetooth connection in order to trigger that haptic feedback. The Pi uses OpenCV to track the position of the LED and it outputs the scaled coordinates over a serial connection to the user's laptop. The user's laptop is connected via this USB serial connection to the Pi and this is how the coordinates are received and how signals for haptic feedback are sent from the laptop to the Pi and then the glove. Our final ma major component of the system is the player's laptop which is running the Unity game and overlays the game UI over a video stream from the laptop's camera, giving that augmented reality effect. 
Within Unity, there is a game clock that triggers events, and a cursor driven by the coordinates sent from the pie uses collision detection in order to slice the fruits. On some of these events, such as slicing a fruit or slicing a bomb, haptic feedback signals are sent and triggered and, and go over the serial connection to the Pi and then over Bluetooth to the glove, which then triggers the motor discs like we just saw. So this is an overview of our solution in Unity. You can see this is our Fruit Ninja game environment. So I'm going to go through a couple important elements. So the raw image is how we are creating augmented reality. We have our canvas, which is basically the base layer. And then the raw image is basically we are taking the input from the user's webcam and we are flipping it and displaying it on the raw image so the user can see their background in real time. We also have the blade. The blade consists of a blade trail. So every time you move your mouse around or your glove around, you'll see a trail following you. So the blade is a 2D object and it's also a circle collider 2D. So that just means any collisions will be detected in 2D. And then we have a couple of different fruit options. We have watermelon, mango, kiwano, and we have, for each fruit, we have a graphics package. So for each of these three fruit, we needed to get some 3D assets. So right now for watermelon, I'm gonna scroll down and you can see the watermelon 3D asset. So that's what the GFX represents. So we have different fruit options. We also have a fruit spawner. The fruit spawner will randomly pick points on the screen to spawn a fruit at, and it provides it with an angle to, to shoot it out and for the projectile motion. And the fruit spawner selects one of watermelon, mango, or kibano. We also have our score and score val that just represents the user's score. You can also see a bomb. So the bomb is just like, it's like the fruit, but if the user cuts the bomb, then that reduces their score. We also have a bomb spawner. The bomb spawner basically selects bombs and the, the frequency of selecting bombs is less than the frequency of selecting fruits. And as the game goes on, this increases. So you'll see more bombs showing up. And the bomb spawner also sele can select between two different bomb types and spawn bombs at different points on the game. And finally, we have the model. So this is just for a complete experience. So the model shows the glove. And this shows you the haptic feedback that you would experience as a user. So. Right now, if we're demoing this virtually, we'd like people to experience this. So when when you wear a glove, you would get haptic feedback, but this model would show you on what fingers you would get haptic feedback on when the game is being played. To test our system, we focused on three main metrics, tracking rate, latency, and precision. Our tracking rate was determined by the frame rate of our infrared sensor, which we set to 30 Hertz. To test latency, we used a setup where a user would wave their hand while wearing the glove between two barriers, and there would be an external camera recording this motion, as well as the resulting movement on the screen, all within one frame. We then manually counted the number of frames in the video that it took for the motion to be reflected on the screen after the user moved their hands. Dividing this number by the camera's frame rate gave us our latency. As you can see, Across 10 trials, our average latency was 133 milliseconds. To test precision, we had a similar setup where a user would move their hand small distances, but we would vary the distance the user stood from the sensor. We then recorded the smallest amount of distance that we were able to move the glove and still have it be detected by the system. As you can see, small motions were detected even up to 15 feet away from the sensor. Until about five feet away, it was kind of hard to accurately move the glove small distances, but the further we stood away from the sensor, the easier it became to perform the test. From these results, the optimal interaction area is within four to 11 feet from the sensor. As for other trade-offs, we found that increasing the tracking rate, which is the frame rate of the camera, caused a decrease in the precision since at higher frame rates, the resolution of the camera sensor decreased. It was easy to make a decision on this trade-off because 30 hertz was plenty for our purposes and gave us the best resolution possible from the camera so that we would have good precision. In terms of other challenges, we definitely spent the majority of our time working on the positional tracking system. We evaluated using an IMU, or inertial measurement unit, but decided that the quadratic drift was too much for our system. 
It was also difficult to write a script using OpenCV for tracking, since things like background subtraction algorithms were too slow.